Hi, Shravan. Hi, Krishna. How are you? All doing good here. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. So, Krishna, uh, so let, let us start uh, with an introduction of myself. So, uh, I'm Shravan Kumar. So, I look after as a project manager for a uh, data science team here uh, who look after the multiple accounts within uh, within this organization. So, I'll be uh, handling a different skill set uh, team here. So, who comes with a experience of data engineering, who comes with the experience of data visualization and as well uh, uh, people who have a background of data science. So, this position, I think you would have gone through the position details. Uh, I mean, the requirement, what we're looking for is someone who have experience in Snowflake. Yes, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I have I have like almost uh, 12 years of experience in this industry. Uh, I currently working with this organization from past five years now. So uh, that that's more about me. So why don't you just uh, walk about yourself? Sure. Yeah. Nice knowing about you, Shavan. So uh, as I said, I'm Krishna. I have a total of five years experience in IT. And uh, most of my journey, I worked as a data engineer. And currently I'm working as a senior data engineer with uh, one of the Indian client company. And I work for a client, called, uh, one of the telecom client, which is from UK. Okay. So I majorly work closely with the marketing team and the product teams. Okay. So where our work will be, we assemble data from a different sources and a third parties. And uh, we turn up that um, information into a useful data for marketing campaigns mainly. Uh, it's majorly to understand the customer behavior or a general campaigns we will run uh, for every week. So as it was a very frequently we doing, we need a faster and better results. Uh, that's where we leverage a, a Snowflake data warehouse and its features um, when we are compared with the traditional where we got a very better feeling with the Snowflake. So uh, I have total three years relevant experience in Snowflake. And also in past, I have worked in a different ETLs, different databases, traditional databases. And um, I do have an experience in a GCP as well. Okay. So that's very short about me, Shavan. Good. Thanks, Krishna, for uh, explain, telling about yourself. Uh, I would like to hear from you, uh, like about your uh, project mostly, like what actually you have done. What kind of features have been used in your project related to the data warehousing or related to the Snowflake? Definitely. Yeah. So as I said, um, we majorly look into a campaign data and a product data. So uh, product in sense, we have recently introduced in a uh, remote, okay, remote for a TV. Um, that's one thing it's called as a horizon we call and we we try to understand a customer behavior. So in sense, in say uh, you switched on a TV, you watched some uh, video on demand or you paid something on a, uh, you know, on some subscription are you paid for any uh, you know uh, any movie you want to watch are you uh, you passed it for some time or you fast forward it for some time so every action we will be taking that as in a data entry and we will be uh, you know uh, running our analytics to uh, understand the behavior and uh, um, whether the customer is churning out of this plan or every lot of data we deal. So as I said, like there are multiple things. So we get a, a millions of millions of records in a day in a real time are a batch process. So Snowflake when it comes to Snowflake when we move to Snowflake, right? So we have we have used almost all the major features we have it in a Snowflake. So majorly coming up from a basic of tables, views, store procs or a tasks uh, like an orchestration tool and streams we have used for uh, some kind of SC CDC work. And um, we have dealt with the different kinds of data as well. So as I mentioned earlier also, no, um, we dealt with a third party's data also. We had a third party vendors where we used to receive a data from either in a JSON format or a pocket or a different XML formats, right? So we have to um, parse that all data where Snowflake has really helped us to do it in a faster way. Right. Um, so different types of data also we dealt and uh, we used an external stages and internal stages um, where some clients, some third parties had been working on a cloud where they were supplying the information um, via AWS S3 or, a, or you know, directly a files. Right. That's where we use the stages as well. And um, we did an auto scaling for uh, 
you know the, some of the kpis we have to complete it by the evod and submit to the you know uh, bigger executives so that they can run the business right so we used an auto scaling mechanisms and cloning so um, if 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 a data analyst and a data engineer wants to work parallelly so we clone the tables uh, we take in the backup using the clones so we have used to almost all the features in the snowflake well uh as you mentioned about the cloning can you just explain me what is a cloning and uh, why we call a cloning as a zero copy cloning definitely yeah so cloning is also referred as a uh, zero copy cloning so what that means is uh, it really doesn't physically copy the data so what happens is a clone can be created for any database or a schema or a table majorly we have created for tables and very rarely we have created for schemas as well so here the main concept of cloning is we don't need to duplicate the storage files on a other disk it's all, we just do mm -hmm. it like we clone the table and provide the table name the underlying the physical data will be still available on a single storage itself so that it just a refers to the cloned table so you no need to pay extra money you no need to pay for the extra storage uh, cost as well so that's called zero copy cloning and it is better in the way of um, you know you no need to pay anything for the clone tables okay okay as you mentioned one of the future while well, you uh, just before uh, you talked about the stages right can you just mention uh, what are the stages and can you tell me how you validate the data once the files are landed or copied into stage sure yeah uh, so we had yeah. a scenario yeah uh, yeah uh, we had a scenario um, in one of the requirement so what's happening is we been getting a files from third party okay the files were been in a json format and some was in a csv format i believe um, so what happened is uh, we used to get some uh, you know some kind of discrepancies in the data so some bad data we can call it okay so we used in internal stages okay some internal stages we have used and some external stages also we have used so once the data lands onto a stage okay before we load into data so uh, initially when i started with the snowflake uh, there was a question saying that um, how can we do a data quality before we loading into the table right so um, unnecessarily after taking care of loading into your table how can we take care before we loading into a table right so uh, when we explored more in a snowflake snowflake have a feasibility or a functionality called as a validation mode so whenever we try to load the data into a tables we use a copy into command so copy into command function will help help for us to load it into a tables okay and copy into command provides a lot other feasibilities the so example once the data is loaded into a table i want to purge the file i don't want that file to be present and i want to save a storage so it can give me a purge or before loading into a table okay so if i want to validate that particular data sent to me today will fit it into my table or not so in that scenarios what we will do is we use a validation mode okay validation mm -hmm. mode command provide it as a return all is all errors so when you when we provide the return all errors it will not load the data but this copy into command is smart enough to understand the table structure and whatever the data we received today and it will try to validate and provide if there are any errors to us so that you no need to load the data just it upfront it will show that these are all the errors you take care this one and load it so we have implemented that for one of the project so that's where we could able to go back to business and say there is a problem um, before we loading the data right so we have saved a lot of resources loading that um, you know stopping the load there so that helped us very you know a lot um, you know while doing a data quality checks okay okay can you tell me or can you explain me what is a caching in snowflake and how many types of there for the you know types of caching definitely yeah so caching is one of the um, very good feature we have it in a snowflake um, so majorly there were there was three types of caching uh, one is query results caching another one is local disk caching so that's that's uh, nothing but a virtual warehouse caching also we call sometimes and metadata caching so metadata caching is majorly we use for the information of the tables and um, if you have um, queried any information dot schema in tables like that so what is catchy in a snowflake um, i think it sounds similar to that way what we uh, you know observe in a different technologies as well so here the 
mainly in a snowflake catchy is uh, the results of every query we executed right so it will get catched for that session and any new query is submitted right so what happens is it will immediately go and it will check if that if the same query been executed previously and then if it is same then it will just pick the data from cache and provides the result it will not go to the underlying table and again scan whole table and provide the results to us so that's the way cache is it will actually saves a lot of time to get the results and saves a lot of resources you no need to pay for that because it is just picked up from the cache so that's how the catchy helps in a snowflake. Okay. Uh, Krishna, have you ever used a time travel concept in project? Uh, yes. How it really helped you? How, how, how it really helped you and where exactly it helped you? Sure. Let me put a scenario here. We have used a time travel. So uh, while this we are doing a uh, unit testing, right? So um, there were two developers we had. Um, so myself and my colleague, we both are working on the same data set, right? Um, there mm -hmm. were a lot of jobs were running where the ETL we are using. We don't know that really there are a lot of tables being involved. So initially when project started, we have raised a ticket with our DBAs to replicate the data from higher environments to lower environments. Actually, it took a little time to us because that is a lot of gb of data right so in that scenarios what happened is you know uh, uh, unknownly the data set which i am using which i am analyzing right my colleague has actually loaded the you know manipulated the data so whatever the snapshot i i was looking is being changed by my colleague uh, unintentionally so at the time so you know we can't stop our work and our work has to continue and we realize that something has been went wrong there okay something is not matching and um, uh, when when we checked right snowflake provides a history of you you will get to know who executed what queries on a particular table or it will provide all the history of the queries who executed what what much time it has executed what is the query id it has executed so we understand that my colleague has executed a query and i want to revert the table back to the normal shape what it was before and how can it help to me right so at the time we have used a time travel so time travel will provide an access to to access the data to any time in the past okay um, so when i say past is like within seven days we had uh, we don't had any you know um, very higher version of a snowflake where you can increase this um, you know time travel thing we had only seven days we realized in one two day itself and what we have done is we executed the time travel query saying that you know at this particular time you revert back the table and i copied into your one of the dummy table and i refreshed my actual table so that i can reutilize it for my unit testing um, that's the way uh, time travel has helped us to not to stop our unit testing and helped us to uh, bring back the data into the same shape where uh, unintentionally something has been done by some other one some other person so that helped us to continue our data testing okay understand okay uh, krishna can you tell me uh, why we use a cdc separately when there is already an inbuilt functionality available in snowflake yeah so as i mentioned we are are uh, you know before snowflake um, we are all being built in an etl so we used an etl to perform all kind of uh, transformations validations or a cdc change data captures um, or whatnot everything we try to do in an etl right um, so we we used a multiple components in etl to um, do a joins understand whether the data is changed if changed change the valid from date valid to date uh, if the data is not changed and new new records appeared put it as an insert or if the data is not coming like the customer we already have and that customer information is not coming treat it as a deletes so like this we have implemented everything in an etl okay so it was in a very hectic task for us uh, to move everything onto a snowflake and snowflake provides um, yeah i also uh, currently built um, a concept called as a streams in snowflake where streams is a very intelligent um, concept or a feature we have in a snowflake which understands the cdc between the previous offset and the current offset and it able to explain me what is being updated what is inserted and what got deleted comparing to the previous data so we do had an experience in implementing streams um, now 
whatever we have implemented i totally agree whatever we have implemented say dc on a etl can be done directly on a um, you know snowflake streams that we can totally avoid the cdc in a etl so but um, as we had a lot many jobs eventually we will move into a snowflake full fledged snowflake solution probably i can say okay i understand i got it okay uh krishna let me give you a scenario here uh, say for example your marketing team need some data to come up with a churn analysis okay they don't have any account how mm -hmm. can you supply the table data with them uh, and revert it once the purpose is served definitely yeah so as i said even i am working for marketing campaign team so um, some of the people newly joined people are whoever is coming and going right so at the time we used to provide a um, tables to them uh, you know in snowflake we have a secure data sharing um, concept right data sharing concept is that so this enables um, you know to instantly and securely share our data with uh, whoever the person who doesn't even have an account also right so we can just sh create a share for on a particular table and we can provide the table to them okay so they can access the table it, it 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 is not limited to table only we can create a views we can create a secured user defined functions we can create a databases everything we can create and we can share with them so just when we create a share they will get um, we will provide a temporary credentials and everything for them so they can able to access and they can continue their work so there is no um, you know uh, show stopper for them as well so they can also continue their work so here data sharing is uh, in snowflake will really help uh, to parallelly continue the work by different teams but majorly data sharing will happen only if the person immediately needed or something but there is a specific roles we create a specific restrictions we create on the tables mm -hmm. okay okay uh, what are the layers we have in snowflake architecture and uh, what does the bottom layer does yes um we have a three layers uh, in snowflake uh, majorly we call is a cloud services where all infrastructure metadata and everything will be there and um, query processing where all the compute computing compute things will happen that means execution of a queries or warehousing res resize auto scaling auto you know um, or scale down all this will happen at a query processing and database storage so database storage is the uh, bottom layer we call so uh, the storage layer is um, you know stores all kind of data um, so any format of data right and tables and uh, we discuss a result catches right result catches also it, it can able to uh, store and majorly this storage layer right uh, it's 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 scalable so you know there is no uh, limitations it's infinite because it's been landed on a cloud so uh, it's a multi cloud you can choose at the time of an account creation is happening so you can you can um, deploy it on either gcp or aws or an azure okay so and uh, uh, it provides as i said it provides an infinite um, storage capacity for us right so and also uh, here as i said a query processing and a database storage so that means uh, you know the storage and the compute engines are separated in a snowflake that's the real differentiator we have when we compare with in a traditional and um, um, snowflake right so both can independently can grow that means um, if a, if some companies are are example I, I i i have a few projects where i need a more compute and less storage and i have another project where i need um, you know more storage and less compute so i i can actually grow independently um, as whatever i need it so i don't need to um, so in, in in traditional ways what happens whenever we want to do um, bump up a compute you have to go with the storage as well parallelly so but that can be totally avoided with the snowflake that's that's the main reason and that are the advantages or benefits we have with the database storage okay okay have you have you created any task in your project yes uh, majorly tasks we have created for very limited one um, um, uh, 
but in an organization on our floor we use an orchestration tools called a control or autosys uh, task is also an orchestration tool uh, which has been introduced by a snowflake uh, that you won't see it anywhere in um, you know traditional data warehouses or comparing to any other uh, um, you know cloud data warehouses also bigquery have its own scheduling uh, bigquery does scheduled queries we can do but we don't have any you know orchestration where you can keep the dependencies like that uh, unless you go within a cloud watch or something like that even similar in the amazon as well tasks are the one of the concepts produced by a snowflake uh, it's majorly like orchestration inside orchestration uh, inside task right you can you can you can write all the coding if you want to or you can assign all the dependencies like um, if i have a two stored procs okay i'll run the stored proc one and i'll say you sleep for 10 minutes and then run the next stored proc okay or else i say if the first stored proc is completed successfully then only you run the second stored proc so like all kind of dependencies on the timings the frequency you want to run can be done in your tasks so it's a purely an orchestration tool we can call but it is limited to snowflake can't be set up with an out of the snowflake objects or out of the snowflake uh, technologies i can call it limited to snowflake but it's a pure orchestration tool which can if you are going with a full fledged snowflake solution this is best to best to um, go with the tasks and uh, put all the dependencies inside the snowflake okay 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 i think uh, i have one last question for you uh, you mentioned you have created a views right can you explain what is the difference between a materialized view and non materialized view definitely yeah uh non materialized views is nothing but a normal views so uh, we will so if example we have a um some some metrics we have written so some aggregations metrics a long query we have written with multiple tables so uh, instead of you writing that query every time we can create a simple view and you execute that view every time so that um it will go into it will always go into the table to fetch the data and produces the results but it's not like that within a materialized view the reason is materialized views are something called a pre computed data sets so what it does is once you execute it's similar kind of you can write a view with all the data sets inside or the joins inside that so everything can be done but but materialized views is a pre computed data sets what that means is once we execute the query the data will get the whatever the data it has been fetched previously will get cached in a memory and next time when you run it okay and there is no changes happened in the underlying table that means there is no records updated inserted any no changes happened in the tables it quickly gets from the cached results so whatever the outputs we are going to get from the materialized views are faster than the normal views okay so uh, uh, that's the reason materialized views um, will be used for a faster results but only it will be when the tables are going to be a little constant it, which is not um, very frequently changing right uh, on that kind of tables we can have this materialized views and that will help us to have a faster results okay okay fine krishna i think i'm good here uh, do you have any questions for me nothing from me shravan okay then i'll share my feedback with the hr team and my hr team will come back for a further rounds of interview sure thank you so much yeah it's nice talking to you thank you yeah same here have a great day